I want to talk about dreams. And I have told you all, or some people, I guess, that dreams are not really dreams. Dreams are supernatural experiences. You may have dreams of people trying to kill you. You may have dreams of snakes and alligators and all types of animals chasing you or trying to kill you. You may have dreams of actual beast men or demons trying to kill you, so on and so on. When you have dreams like that, once you wake up or if you are able in that dream, rebuke that dream instantly, as soon as possible. Any demon, any curse, that is trying to come upon me, I rebuke it, I renounce it. I don't want anything to do with it. Any covenant that was trying to be formed in my dream, I renounce it, I sever it. I don't want any connection with it in my life. And you may say, well, Kevin, you are being a bit extreme. Let's go to Kings or First Kings chapter 3 verses 4 through 13 it is not extreme you may believe that it is extreme because you don't know much about the supernatural and i am not saying that i know everything about demons and stuff like that no i don't but let's go to first kings chapter 3 4 through 13 and we are going to learn well, this is going to be about King Solomon and his dream. Okay. Four. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was their great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. So there were reasons back in... Back in the Old Testament, they would do animal sacrifices for certain reasons. And that is a very broad subject right there. Now, we don't have to do animal sacrifices. Jesus Christ died, right? So he is the ultimate sacrifice. So we don't have to sacrifice anything ever since Jesus Christ died. Okay. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For that was the great high place, a thousand burnt offerings. So King Solomon did a thousand burnt offerings upon that altar. So 1,000 sacrifices, that is a lot. I'm sure that Solomon had people do it for him, but pretty much you can say King Solomon ordered 1,000 sacrifices. That is so much. Okay, verse 5. And Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream. <laughs> Let me highlight this. And Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. So I could stop right there to prove my point. Actually, no. To prove one of my points, that your dreams are not really dreams. Your dreams are supernatural experiences. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. So your dreams are not really a dream. Okay. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. So why, so why is God saying this to King Solomon? Well, we just read in verse 4, Solomon did a thousand burnt offerings. Let's make that uh, green, I guess. So once Solomon ordered 
a thousand sacrifices. In verse 5, this is saying that the Lord appeared in the dream of King Solomon. Okay. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. Okay. Verse 6. And Solomon said, Thou hast shewed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy. So you have given my father great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness. So you have showed my father David mercy, because he was following. Now, David did wrong things, but from what this is saying, that David was righteous, even though he have sinned in the past. And an uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. So this is saying, hey, you were very kind to my father. And you are showing even more mercy for placing me as king, as his son. Okay. Verse 7. And now, O Lord, my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David. So you are making me king now. I am David's son, and now you are making me king. Okay. Thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. So I don't know what I am doing. <laughs> so I am asking you, Lord, for help. Verse 8. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered, nor counted for multitude. So you have me to be over these people, the nation of Israel. So I need your help to show me how to rule over them. Okay. Verse 8. Verse 9. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people. Okay. So right here, he is asking for wisdom. Give therefore thy servant, give me an understanding heart, wisdom to judge thy people. Okay, so this is what Solomon or King Solomon is asking for. He is asking for, asking the Lord for an understanding heart that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this, thy so great a people? So give me wisdom so I can judge your people because I want to do right, I don't want to do wrong. Verse 10, in the speech pleased the Lord. So when King Solomon asked the, the Lord for wisdom, this pleased him. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Okay, verse 11. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, so you are not asking for long life, neither has asked riches for thyself, so you are not asking to become more rich, nor hast asked the life of thy enemies. You are not asking me to kill your enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. So you are asking for wisdom. Verse 12. Behold, I have done while he was dreaming. The Lord is saying, Behold, I have done according to thy words. While, man, 
please listen to what I am trying to say. When you are dreaming, it is not a dream per se. It is real. It is supernatural. Behold, I have done according to thy words. So you are asking for wisdom already done. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. So there is not anyone before you or after you that is going to be as wise as you. Well, behold, I have done according to thy words, lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that thee, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. I believe this is saying in all aspects, so not just wisdom, but in all aspects, in everything. Verse 13, and I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked. So I am also going to give to you, even when you did not ask me, both riches and honor. So I am going to make you rich and give you more honor so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. So this is saying, well, first, what did King Solomon do? He made a thousand burnt offerings, right? Then what did he do next? What verse is that? Verse nine, he asked for wisdom. So because of these things, now he is gonna have honor, riches, and so many more things because of what he done before. And how did the Lord visit Solomon? Through his dream. In a dream by night, and God asked, so in his dream, I don't know if I have the verse up. Uh, let me see, maybe it is 14. I believe. Maybe 15. But anyways, let me get to my point. I believe in verse 15, it says that he wakes up or something like that. So let me check right quick. Verse 15. Yes. And Solomon awoke. <laughs> so this tells you <laughs> so this tells you that he was asleep and the Lord was speaking to him, making a covenant with him while he was asleep. So you may ask me, Kevin, you read so much to me. What is your point? OK, if you don't get my point by now, please listen to me now. When you are having demonic dreams, either while, let's say that demons or a demon disguised as a woman or a man continues to have sex with you every night or every so often. If animals are chasing you, trying to kill you, if people are trying to feed you in your dreams, if you are having weird, crazy dreams, when you wake up or while you are in that dream, quickly rebuke, renounce, denounce, refuse, cut off, bind and cast that dream off. Any demonic covenant that is trying to attach itself to me, I renounce it, I denounce it, I don't want it. Stay away from me. I bind and cast you demons away from me right now. This is what you have to do. Dreams are not dreams. 
Dreams are not dreams. If this is not proof enough, I don't know what to show you. Dreams are not dreams. So once you wake up, and this is what I do, because I have some very weird dreams as well of demons or, yes, demons dressed up as women or disguised as women. Let me tell you this one thing, this one dream. I believe it was three days ago and I was having this dream about a particular woman and I got really close to her and I kind of knew that it was going to be a sex dream or whatever else and I was patting down her legs. Crazy thing, her legs did not feel like a human woman's legs it felt like some type of animal leg i'm telling you i am telling you i believe that is the first time i was able to feel or actually feel something like that it felt like i was rubbing down an animal's leg like i don't know i can't describe to you what type of leg it felt like, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it to you, some type of goat or some type of, let me draw it, I guess. It was like, it was going down like that and then it curved like that. So like, like that, if that makes any sense. It was like that and then it curved down a little bit or in an angle. I don't know. But... It did not feel like a human's woman's leg. It did not. And I was like, whoa, in my dream. So when I wake up, each time I have a crazy dream, I rebuke, I renounce, I denounce those dreams. I don't want anything to do with those dreams, any covenant, any type of soul tie or uh, attachment that is trying to come upon me because of that dream, I don't want it. I rebuke it. I renounce it. Stay away from me, demons, in the name of Jesus. This is what you have to do. If the Lord can visit you in your dreams, as it shows with King Solomon, don't you believe that demons can do the same thing? Huh? If the Lord can bless you, listen, dreams are not dreams. So let me stop here. God bless.